many times when we don't transform we don't commit ourselves to the hands of god to be renewed and transformed what happens is we may have number plate or we may have uh, you know uh, the sign board outside which claims that we are christians but when people actually you know look inside or try to come inside or try to come to us to find hope and what they expect to be there it may not be there it may be an emptiness all inside first timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 10. Now the Spirit explicitly says that in later times some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. Okay, let's read it together. I'm going to read from verse 2 onwards, so follow along with me. To the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared, they forbid marriage and demand abstinence from food that God created to be received with gratitude. By those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with the thanksgiving. Since it is sanctified by the word of the God and by prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Nourished by the words of faith and good teachings that you have followed. But have nothing to do with the pointless and silly myths. Rather train yourself in godliness for the training of the body has limited benefit. But godliness is beneficial in every way since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this reason we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Can we lift up our hands and just thank the Lord? Amen. Can we open up our mouth and just praise God? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This morning God has given us this ability to stand up on our feet or... Just open up our mouth, lift up our hands. It's a blessing from the Lord. There are many who don't have that privilege. Can we just thank the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all may be seated, please. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I greet you all in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. It's a privilege that God has given in our lives to be in, in his presence once again. I know that uh, uh, some warmth came a few weeks ago and uh, the cold is back. Oh, I was not telling about spiritual climate. I was just referring to the weather outside. I know some of you misunderstood and thought that I'm talking about the spiritual atmosphere. No. Praise God. Even if it is cold outside, inside we should be warm for the Lord. Amen? Amen. I don't know why, but uh, I feel that uh, 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 there needs to be uh, a, a, I, I don't know how to say this. So why don't we all close our eyes for a moment before I speak the word? Let's all close our eyes. Why don't we all open up our mouth and just pray? Can we all pray for a minute? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, wherever two or three gather in my name, I am there. Hallelujah. This morning, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. He is here to bless us, to touch us, to speak to us. Hallelujah. I know that uh, many of you have gone through challenging times in the past weeks and, uh, you, know, you know, past days. But this morning, as we are in the presence of the Lord, can we just say to the Lord, Lord, I need you more than anything else. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Master. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy 
Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. Thy loving kindness is better than life. I lift my hands up unto thy name. I lift my hands up unto thy name. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. This morning, let's turn our attention to um, the epistle which Paul wrote to Timothy. And I'm going to start a new series this morning. As uh, year 2023 started, uh, we went through a series on new life. And I was, uh, whenever I was speaking, in both services, I was speaking on the same subject of new life. And uh, I think I spoke, I don't know, um, almost 18 or 20 messages on new life. Uh, but the, today morning, I'm going to start a new series. Actually, in both services, that doesn't mean that I'm going to preach every week, no. But uh, I want to focus on two aspects as I was uh, uh, praying. So this morning, uh, the first series we are going to start is the series called Training for Godliness. In other words, we have looked at it in the past, but we are going to look at uh, the subject from a fresh perspective. Um, this can also be called as a subject of spiritual disciplines, but more so I want to call this as training for godliness. Uh, I want to start with a few verses from the portion we have read here, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It says, but have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths, rather train yourself in godliness. For the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for also for the life to come. But training for godliness is much better, promising benefit in this life and in the life to come. So there is a question um, which has troubled many people. The question is, Okay, we come to Christ, Jesus makes everything new, and uh, we have a new life. Then why do we need to, um, you know, I don't know whether that's the right word to use, but we need, we need to struggle sometimes. We need to strive sometimes in the spiritual life. Um, if we let things off, it slips very easily. Spiritual life doesn't come up automatically, but it can go down automatically if we are not careful. Do you agree with that or not? Okay, prayer life, sometimes we have to struggle to keep it up. Bible reading, sometimes we have to struggle to keep it up. When I say struggle, what I mean by that is uh, we have to be careful. If we ignore for one day, very soon, we will be completely off. In the same way regarding a lot of things spiritually. And uh, sometimes it is uh, very important that uh, we have to care, pay careful attention. That's why we go to church every Sunday and whenever we get an opportunity and every day in our homes we spend time in prayer. We sp spend time in um, reading the word of God and all those things. But many times people invest a lot in many things. But one thing they don't invest is in their spiritual growth, in their spiritual life. Now we all understand that training is important, right? If you have to learn a new technology, if you have to learn a new art or a skill, what do you need to do? You need to train. Um, in order to make progress with anything in life, in, especially in today's world, um, it's very important that we go through some training. Some people say they can learn themselves, but at the end of the day, we all know that when they say they can learn themselves, what they're referring to is mostly they can search, they can find resources, they can read about it. Still, they are investing time to gain the knowledge and the skills which are needed. 
um, it is uh, estimated that workplace training uh, is a 370 billion US dollar economy right now. now that's the amount of uh, budget or the expenses, which is a, it's, a, it's done by some people who look into this, is 370 billion US dollar budget. So those who work in companies know that, you know, when you start the year, you know, the, or whenever the, the budgets are set, the managers or your, um, you know, people will come and ask, uh, do you need any training this year? They bu put a budget and they have all these things because they all know that Without training, the workforce will be outdated very soon. That's why they invest into training. The teachers in, the, in our public schools or private schools, they have days where you know, parents are impacted by that, especially if both of them are working. They are impacted by that because you know, they have few days when teachers are at uh, training. And uh, sometimes 40-year-old, 50-year-old teachers are also going for what? Training, why do they go for training? Come on, they had been teaching for probably 25 years. 25 years they had been teaching and still they go for training. Why do they go for training? Have you ever thought about that? Why? Why do they go for training? Come on, respond. Give me a response. Anybody knows why do they go for training? Because they want to be updated with the technology. They want to be updated with the new tools, new skills available. So they all go through the training and another interesting factor is that it says that in the United States, 39% of American households hold a gym membership. Between now and 2028, the fitness industry, industry is expected to grow from 171.75 billion to 434 billion. I don't know how many of you have membership. I didn't count that, but uh, this is what the statistics says that that uh, you know physical fitness industry is growing like anything and uh, as people are becoming more aware we all know that in the olden days the lifestyle itself did not require what a fitness center was not needed based on the lifestyle people lived in the past but now the lifestyle and the food everything we have requires us to be more mindful about what? Our fitness. We have to spend extra time to keep ourselves up. So when I, uh, when I was traveling, um, I was eating and uh, I was doing everything and everything was still okay. I didn't gain. So, so when I was telling the doctor about it, he was saying that you are very active while you are going. Probably that's why. You are very active. But after coming back, I am struggling to meet my daily steps, goals, and all those stuff. Because you have to take extra time out. It is not automatically built into our lifestyle. Right? So many times we all struggle. I don't know. Uh, th this may not be a, s a struggle for everyone. But sometimes you struggle because the lifestyle, the change, everything has brought us to a point where... If we go with the normal flow of things, very soon you will be out of, you know, uh, out in many, many of your numbers. Many of your lab results will be out of, uh, you know, the normal range. So that's, there is a high probability that. So this morning as I started, you may be thinking, um, is Pastor today going to encourage all of us to work out or what? what is the thing? Or is he starting a membership, gym membership drive? No, I'm trying to come back, come to the point here. That, um, you know, just like, um, you know, there's a man, uh, there's a person, Billy Kim, he said, like any runner, we must prepare for our race and have the right kind of training to help us finish strong. As a Christian, as a child of God, we have a desire. What is our desire? We want to finish strong. We want to complete our race. And uh, in order for that, we need to prepare for our race and have the right kind of training, especially in the first service, I kind of focused a lot more on the young children sitting here. So listen to me carefully because these are lessons which you need to know at a very young age. Then things will be, can be very smooth going forward. But the problem is distraction is one of the key problems 
And somebody said, like, that's the pandemic. That's a real pandemic. Distraction. Distraction. We cannot discern God's voice when we are distracted. Listen to this. We cannot listen or discern God's voice when we are distracted. So since uh, the service started at 9.30, how many times did we get distracted? We got distracted. The lyrics is not coming. We got distracted by different, different aspects. But that's fine. That's a momentary distraction. But in generally in life, many times, people are very much distracted. And that has brought another problem, which is called as shadow spirituality versus deep spirituality. People are developing something where it's very shallow. Very shallow. And uh, shallow spirituality will eventually lead to great destruction. People will have shipwreck if they don't, they are not careful. That is the reason why where we understand that people read the Bible and they hear good messages, they do everything, still the behaviors, the conduct is so counter to what Bible teaches because they have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. The fake spirituality, shallow spirituality can come. And uh, the other problem which it brings along with it is we have knowledge, but we lack practice. We have what? Knowledge, but we lack practicing what we know. So this series is going to challenge us in that aspect of some of the things we have traditionally known, but practically we don't do it. Practically we don't carefully look at it. Because if we don't take care of it, very soon we will have a spirituality which will be nothing but a traditional inherited spiritual life, and I don't want us to end there. So on the onset, let me tell you, today is an introduction to the series, but, um, and I'm going to share some things from the scriptures we read, but as we have, um, you know, as we move forward, there will be three types. I will come to that. Number one, we will be focusing on personal disciplines. Number two, we will be focusing on the outward discipline. Number three, we'll be focusing on the community discipline. So that's all coming um, your way. But this morning, let us focus on the verse we have read here. The verse, chapter 4, verse 7, actually talks about the fact that have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. What does it say? Train yourself in godliness. So, Bible is teaching us that we need to train ourselves not only in the latest technology, not only in the latest tools and the skill sets we need to perform our job in this world, but in godliness also we need to train ourselves. So have you thought about that? Training ourselves into go in, in godliness? And what does it mean to be godly? What does it mean to be godly? Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes we say this person is, or this particular so about somebody, we may say they are godly people. What do you mean by when they are godly people? Whom do you call as godly people? Somebody who gossips, you will call that person godly. Or somebody who quarrels, you will call that person godly. Somebody whose attitude is not correct, would you call that person as godly? Somebody who gets angry, somebody who nags. You know, we don't call all those people godly. But godly, uh, are we call people godly who we feel like are exhibiting the characteristics of, of what? Godly behaviors. Who have, who, whom we feel like, okay, they, they fear God. They respect God. They respect the word of God. They have reverential fear inside of them regarding God. And they are godly people. So here... Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, who is already a pastor, that train your 
yourself to be what? Yourself in godliness. And he goes forward and says, what does, his, what does it say? It says that training of the body has limited benefits. So training of body is not wrong. Bible never says that you should not do anything. You can walk, you can do exercise, whatever you can do. But Paul says that, benef that benefits. Absolutely there is benefit. But the benefit is what? It's limited. But what happens when you are training in godliness? It is beneficial in every way since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So the physical body, we all understand one day we will leave this. We will leave out of this body. This is a temporary thing which has been given to us. Whatever we do with this, as it ages, it has its own challenges and problems. As, 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 as it gets used in this world, it has got its own problems. And uh, if you don't use it, still it has got problems. There are certain things if you just don't use it and keep it in, uh, in a safe place, it will remain like that for years. But there are certain things if you keep it in a safe place for long time without using it, when you go to look at that, it will be spoiled. It will not be useful. It may have rust. It may have completely stop functioning. Same way with the body. You know, if sometimes we say legs are getting stiff, what is the solution to that? Start walking or running. Sometimes we say the body is getting, and, and um, sometimes people say the body is very tight, you know, and then they do some things to loosen it up because if you, if you don't do and use it, it becomes tight and it has got different issues. Those are all good and we are going to leave this body one day and we will not be carrying this forward. Whatever I do with this body, this is only good unless and until I am living. But when I leave this body, then this is of no value. That is the reason why... Uh, you know, we don't have to break our head over like simple issues because anyway, this is not going to be carried over to, see all the physical problems we are having, this is not going to be carried over into, into eternity, right? Is that, isn't that simple thing? So all the problems, sometimes people have what is called as chronic diseases, chronic problems which everybody knows, even the doctors know that it is not going to be solved. Only thing you can do is have some medication and maintain it for a period of time until you are alive. Or, you know, the medications can control it. But we all know one thing, all these prescriptions and medications are only needed to maintain until the last breath. Once we take the last breath, it is no more needed. But, Godliness, training in godliness says it is beneficial in every way since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So it is beneficial in present life and also, so there is beneficial in every way. Now imagine and think about yourself, where do you focus and spend more time in physical or godliness training? Because sometimes we get so worried, you know, after an annual checkup or something when the doctor says your, uh, be, um, you know, your, your, maybe your weight or your something, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, borderline, this, that. And immediately we are all motivated to, you know, do something. Why? Because we want to somehow make sure that we are healthy. And this health, if, even if you have... You know, sometimes as uh, children say six pack or eight pack or whatever, this all pack will remain here when you leave this body. But Bible teaches that godliness, the training in godliness you take and you receive and you follow through, that is going to be beneficial not only for the life in this world, but it is also going to be beneficial for the life which is going to come after. Because we, don't, we are not going to carry anything over. All the good stuff we eat to 
give nourishment to the body is good, but it is only good for this life, for the present life. But once we leave, then what is going to happen? We are not going to have it. But godliness, we are going to take it further. It is going to come along with us. I'm going to read that verse again. It says, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So that is very clear for us that training in godliness is needed. And it is very important and we should not ignore that aspect. Because if we ignore that aspect then we will not have much to carry forward beyond this life. Okay, having said that, when we look at the first century church and uh, throughout the history and even today, we learn that Bible has suggested, Bible has some things which Jesus taught, disciples have written about it or the apostles have written about it, which are beneficial for Training in godliness. are tr go Good for training in godliness. That's what we will be focusing. But let us today look at few familiar things from the book of Acts. Which talks about the discipline of the first century church. So that we can get an idea. First I want to turn your attention to Acts chapter 2 verses 42. Where the church has just been formed. These people after the um, resurrection and then the ascension of Jesus Christ to the heaven. These people were waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes. And that day, 3,000 people accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Or they come to faith. They take water baptism. And uh, the church is now um, moving forward. And the church brought in some disciplines into the life of the church. What were those disciplines? Yes, verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So there was this um, cycles of things going on that first of all, people were listening to the apostles' teaching. Number two, they were engaged in fellowship with one another. And number three, they were breaking the bread. And number four, they were also Praying, they were spending time in prayer. That's the rhythm we find very at the very beginning of the church. And then uh, when we come to chapter 6, verses 4, then when there was an issue where the apostles actually say, we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word and select some people who will be ready to serve at the table, but we are going to be focused on Prayer and the ministry of the word. So you see that there was a clear focus because apostles knew that if they did not focus on the ministry of the word and of prayer, things are not going to move forward as it should move forward. Now when you come to Acts chapter 13 verses 1 onwards to 1 to 3, you will see that the church was worshipping church. This church has teachers, prophets and everyone. But at the same time, the practice of the church was church was a worshipping church. This church was a fasting church. And this church was a praying church. This church was a church where Holy Spirit had the full liberty to speak. So you see, worshipping, fasting and praying all part of this Antioch church from where uh, Apostle Paul went out as a missionary along with uh, Barnabas and established churches in, all, in, in different places. So the church rhythm had worship, fasting, then prayer. Now, when Apostle Paul writes to um, the Romans and Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, we all understand, we all know it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your, your true worship. Then he says, do not conform, do not be conformed to this age, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing and perfect will of God. So here, the focus is on transformation. The focus here is on change. But unfortunately, we live in a time where many times children of God who claim Christians are not ready to change. They are not ready to change on anything. I think we sometimes feel like we have come to a level where we know how to navigate things and we know the range and we will remain within the range. We are not going to go above the range and we will ensure that we don't go below the range. We want to be confined to that range. That range is good if it is the highest standard of range which God expects from us. No. Many times we get stuck where we are comfortable. But Bible teaches us that we have to renew our mind because there is a risk that the world, this age, wants to conform ourselves into its own mold. That's why Paul says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed. So if we are not transforming, what will happen? We will be automatically be conforming to the things of this age. If we are not being transformed by the renewing of our mind, we will not be able to discern the good, pleasing and perfect will of God. In order to understand the perfect, pleasing, good will of God, what do we need in our life? Is a transformation process. Transformation by the renewing of our mind. Otherwise, we will be conformed to the patterns of this age. I have said this in the past. A long time ago, somebody said, you tell me what the world is telling today, I will tell you what the church will say in six years. But now some people say that, has, that, age, that time frame has reduced. Tell me what the world is telling today, I will tell you what the church will say in the near future. Because the world has influenced and it has impacted the church. And the, when I say church, it's the people more than how much the word of God should have impacted the church and the people of God. That's the reason why we see a lot of churches departing. When I say churches, a lot of people departing from the true word of God and they are going after what the world is telling, the, what the world is teaching. The world tells that something the Bible tells is not correct. It's a crazy idea. This is the way it should be. Very soon, there will be people who claim to know God and believe God and follow Bible. They will also say that is correct. They are going after those things because they are being transformed by the world, not by the word. This morning, the question is, are we committed to be transformed by the word or by the world? If we allow ourselves to be transformed by the world, very soon we will be a bunch of people, when I say bunch means we will become somebody who doesn't have God. We may claim, we may have a nameplate, but there may not be any reality in that. I remember some time ago, um, I, I, I was traveling somewhere or I was going somewhere and I really wanted to, um, I don't know, remember it was, yeah, I wanted to drink something because I was feeling very tired and I wanted to drink something. And I, I don't think anybody was with me. So what I did was, from a distance, I saw there a board of a, a place where I can buy something uh, to drink. Drink means some, some, some juice type of something, which to give me little energy. So I, I, I took that uh, turn and I went there. The board was all there. And I parked the car. I didn't see many other cars in the parking lot. I thought... Oh, that this will be quick so that I parked the car and uh, when I looked, what did you, did you know what I saw? Only the board was there but nothing was inside. Probably they moved out and they did not remove the board by the time I was looking at it. And I saw everything was, uh, nothing was there. It was during the day so I didn't even pay attention whether it was light was there or not. So I got out and I saw that nothing is inside. But the board outside says such and such store and that gives me this idea that, okay, I, am going, I will get this, this, this stuff from this place. 
many times when we don't transform we don't commit ourselves into the hands of god to be renewed and transformed what happens is we may have number plate or we may have uh, you know uh, the sign board outside which claims that we are christians but when people actually you know look inside or try to come inside or try to come to us to find hope and what they expect to be there it may not be there it may be an emptiness all inside and that is a tragedy of today's time frame time generation where many people don't really do that i hope i i'm sure you guys are you all are not like that but this morning the key element i want you to understand is bible teaches us to be investing in training for what godliness along with everything else we can do now there is a lot of uh, people who think that you know spiritual disciplines are all legal requirements no they are not legal requirements see someone said i don't remember who was it who said opposite of grace is works not effort opposite of grace is what works not effort if effort was opposite of grace then you know the the portion we ended today i, I just came to my notice uh, 1 timothy chapter 4 verses uh, 10 says for this reason we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living god who is the savior of all people especially of those who believe apostle paul says it's not like you know we have the grace of god and everything so we sit with our you know uh, on on a couch and uh, sleep all day no it says we labor and strive because we have put our hope because we have such a great hope inside of us what we do is we strive we labor we do what we can do again it is not to earn anything but to place us before god so that he can transform us this training for godliness is not to earn the favor of god sometimes uh, people tell that if you pray for uh, i have heard this people pray for this much time you will have you will get this uh, if you pray for this much time you will have ministry you will have this thing you will have that thing you will have no that's not the bible doesn't support that all those things one day i i was talking to someone and i actually i i it was not going anywhere so in order to confuse or little bit bring calmness i asked them a very simple question i said you know jesus actually said don't babble when you pray you know just just father in heaven knows before you even ask anything and you just need to present so then why do you think so they were like oh i was not trying to tell people not to pray but what i was trying to say is we it's not like we can gain something but we can be available before god so that he can transform us that's why these disciplines will work because when we train ourselves in the matter of godliness what is happening is the changes happen in the inner chamber of our heart and it is not a quick fix it is not a quick fix it happens in the inner chamber of our hearts inner chamber of our heart many times when i started i said we struggle we have different different things because sometimes our heart wanders away do you remember the song we used to sing and sometimes we sing even now come thy fount of every blessing tune my heart to sing thy praise grace some people changed it to grace some people changed it to praise but either way prone to wander lord i feel it prone to wander lord i feel it and that's the one of the biggest challenge saints people pilgrims have faced throughout the generation if you read the history if you read uh, uh, the the life of many people you will understand that because this heart has a tendency to wander it is like uh, the garden which is not if it is not taken care what will happen 
okay summer is come and uh, let's say you don't go out into your yard and do anything what is going to happen what is going to happen very soon what will be there you will see them beautiful yellow flowers i went into a different place and uh, i saw that they they treat that as a beautiful flower i saw a hill full of beautiful flowers somewhere not outside but in us itself i saw somewhere and they have that that looked very beautiful but you know two of two of those comes on in our yard we get so upset i know what the reason but i'm just saying and we if we don't do anything and then uh, you know we we put so much effort and we spend money to have good grass but anybody had uh, put the seed for the weeds to grow and the fertilizer anything for the weeds to grow no it comes so if not taken care so we all we all make this joke in our neighborhoods right okay we know that this this house or this this people they take care of their yard very well and some some people we know they don't right i don't know i didn't i didn't see your yard but i'm just saying but why the same ways with the heart if left on its own this heart can wander off but if proper maintenance and po- proper care is given this heart can produce good results good fr- fruits out of it it can become beautiful many times many people their life is in a miserable shape spiritually talking not in other ways other ways they may be very good spiritually it reaches there because they have not practiced any spiritual disciplines in their life and they have just let the heart to wander off and they are just allowing so as we go through this series this morning i want to conclude by saying that as children of god we should invest into training for godliness so a lot of things we do actually are comes under that you know the effort we took right after this service as i'm going to conclude here and pray and conclude we are going to have uh, our kids go and uh, some of our dear ones are going to teach them all these things why aren't are we trying to do at the end of the day at the end of the day it is all so that their heart can be set on god but when we try to do that for the children adults also need to or the older people also need to be uh, you know make sure that we are also training ourselves in godliness 